The integration of Adobe Comp and Muse allows you as a web designer to have an incredible amount of creative freedom very early on in your design process. Let's take a look at this workflow in action. So I'm here in my pigeon design and I have a client. The client asked me to build out a website for their kick scooter. And I've done that. And in building out that site, I created assets and things like Photoshop. Um, I have vector content that I created in Illustrator. And there are elements, obviously, that I created in Adobe Muse, like an interactive map or a contact form. One of the best parts about Adobe Comp is that all of my Creative Cloud library elements that I've created upstream, in essence, can come back downstream as I build out a site. Now, my client has asked me to do a very quick one-page site for a maker fair that's happening later in the month. So it's going to be a one-page website. I want to leverage the branding that I have on this live site, but I need to come up with a new concept. And rather than really jumping directly into Muse, I want to do a little bit of experimentation. And for that, I'm going to use Adobe Comp. Let me go ahead and minimize the browser so that you can see my iPad and Comp running on the iPad. So I'm here within the application, and I want to start a new project. So I click on the plus button, and this allows me to choose a format. Now, I don't really like most of the formats that I see here, so I'm going to come to My Formats and select New Format, and I'll give it a name. We'll call it Danny Web, and I'm going to define it at about 960 in width and about 1500 in height, and I'll save that, and I'll go ahead and use that format. So I have a nice workspace here now that I can build out. Now, as I mentioned, I can always wireframe using gestures and such within Comp, but I want to really leverage my Creative Cloud library and the assets that I've built there for this work. So to begin with, I'm going to click on the image icon, and I'm going to make sure that I switch over to my libraries and click on Pigeon Assets, and I can see all of the assets that I have in that library. I'm going to click on the hero image, this was created in Photoshop with a gradient in the background. Come over to my canvas and I'm going to press and drag that into position until I get a nice header bit on top. Next thing I want to do is add some text. And when I was working in Photoshop, I created some character styles using typekit fonts. And I want to bring those over. So I'll click on the text tool here. And instead of app styles, I'll click on my libraries and I will click on Pigeon Assets where I see some character styles that were defined. I'll go ahead and select the white headline text and back on the canvas I'll bring that into position a bit here and resize it so that it fits the space. Now I can leave this as what's known as Greeking text. I'm going to click in and actually add my own custom text. So let's change this to bring your Creative Projects to Life. Well, that's obviously pretty big. So with it selected, I'm going to gesture here to resize it until Creative goes up to that top line. I'll give it a little bit of help here. All right, that's what I have in mind. And I'll come in with the text tool and center that there. Now, if I don't want to type on the iPad, I can always use gestures to create placement uh, text for position only. So I'm going to come in and create a two-line headline here. And let's go ahead and make that a little smaller. We'll make it two levels deep. And I do want it to be centered, so I'll center it. I'm going to move it up into position. And I'd like it to be white instead of black. So I'll come in and with the color picker here, change that to white. That looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is add some images to my design, but I don't have the images with me right now. So I'm going to have some placeholders for those images. I'll come in and using gestures, I'm going to draw a placeholder or an image container. Once I have one there, I can just use a gesture to duplicate that first object. And I'll do so until I have six of them across the page. Almost there. Do two more. Great. 
And I did a pretty good job, but it's not quite fitting. So I'm going to use a gesture to select that group and press and drag them until they're in the position that I'd like them to be. Great, very quick. I want to add some additional Greeking text. So I'll create a new text container. And I can change the font later if I'd like to be something that's more standard. This is using a default font. That's fine. I'm going to create three of these across and select that as a group and move those into the center. Maybe I'll leave some room for some icons above them. Next thing I want to add is a map and I want to add a contact form. Now I've built these out in Muse already. Um, I want to leverage what I have upstream by bringing it downstream here. So I'm going to go into my library and there we go. I can grab my map. I'm going to select that map and draw it to the width of the layout. That looks good. I want to have a footer now. So I'll just draw a container here. And I want to use one of the colors that I defined in my pigeon design. So this time in the color palette, I'm going to select pigeon assets and get that dark footer color. I'm going to drag that into position. And I'll bring my map down a little larger. And lastly, I want my call to action or my contact form. So I'll go into my library and scroll on down for that interactive contact form. Once I've placed it on the canvas, I can press and drag it into that footer area. All right, well, that's a nice rough comp that just took me a few minutes to build out. Let's go ahead and upload this into Muse, and we can see how we can extend that design. To do so, I come to the Share menu here and just select Send to Muse CC. When I switch over to Adobe Muse, Comp has already pushed the file to Muse and it's opened automatically. I can come and double click on that page now and take a look at the content I created. Now everything I created in Comp is here and it's editable within Muse so I can go forward with my design. I may decide to come in and change some of the text attributes. I could come in and style the position only text, actually change the words that I have here. If you remember I didn't have the images ready on my iPad but I have them here on my desktop and I've created those four position only containers. So I can just pull that on file to place and I can select about six cubes that I'd like to include in the design. And with my place gun, I can come and just click and release and those images will fill the container in a scale to fill default way there. I got one extra, I'll delete that. Now, as I move down on the page, I can see some of the interactive widgets that we added in our comp design. We have a contact form here at the bottom, and we also have an interactive map. Now, because these are widgets within Muse, they're configurable. I can select the map, and in the flyout menu here, instead of having the address be the default for Adobe Headquarters, I can have it go to the event location, which is the Marin uh, Fairgrounds. When I click off, that map is going to render the new location. Also with the contact form, I can leave the default address that I've set, or I can come in and change that email address if someone different should be receiving any of the submissions to this little microsite. Now I'm obviously nowhere near finished with this design, but if I wanted to stop and just see how far I've gotten in just a few minutes, I can pull down on file to preview the page in the browser, Muse is going to render all of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript elements. I can come in and take a look at the design that I have so far. I've gone a long way, basically very, very quickly. So this is just touching on the Comp to Muse workflow. I encourage you to give it a try yourself.